You're listening to an archived Cabral Concept podcast. After listening to this show, check out the most up-to-date podcasts available at stephencabral.com slash podcasts or search directly on iTunes. And now, welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner Dr. Stephen Cabral shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurvedic healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the Cabral House Calls. Great to have you here today on part two, our second part of our Cabral House Calls. Hopefully, you tuned in yesterday to learn about the debates on Copaiba and see if it's as good as CBD, checking out different types of food sensitivity testing, different types of reactions, whether they be sensitivities or allergens, looking at blood pressure medication and maybe some alternatives to that, looking at weight loss-based herbs, looking at the fruitarian-based diet, also talking about having caffeine and coffee in the morning, and the other one we answered was on keto and if it's something that should be done by those who are doing weight training or those who are not looking to lose weight as well. Check out that show. Always a good time being able to kind of talk with our community in my own way, being able to kind of take a pulse, right? Take a pulse, like an Ayurvedic pulse of what's going on in our community, in the world. What questions do people have? And it also gives me a lot of, I don't know if fodder is the right word, but a lot of educational material for myself to know what people are talking about, to know what they want to hear more about so that I can create longer podcasts, 20, 25 minute podcasts on a daily basis. So that we can talk about one topic, we can go more in depth and then I can also refer back to it. So on the Cabral House Calls, you'll hear me refer back to a lot of shows and that's because I can't give a 20 minute answer. I can give a couple minute answer to each person and then I can refer back to previous shows. Today is episode 1262. So episode 1262, you get to read all the questions there, a lot of links that link you up to um, other podcasts, etc. right on that page. So feel free to check that out. And remember, it's the daily accumulation of knowledge, not ever just one answer, even on a Cabral house call, that I think you should go by. Build up your knowledge base. And remember, there's nothing more important to learn about than your health. There honestly isn't. Think about it. When you get sick, you can't go to work. You can't take care of your family. You're not really even good for yourself. So what I'm talking about is this. Get healthy, stay healthy. Lose the weight if you need to, then maintain the weight. Start to live a healthier life now so when you're in your 60s, 70s, and beyond, you're not saying, oh, now's the time I need to get healthy. Still do that. We've got a lot of people in their 60s, 70s, and 80s listening to the Cabral concept. Probably some in their 90s as well. But remember, if you have the opportunity not to wait, don't wait, right? The best time to work on your goals was yesterday, but today's a pretty good day as well. Now, if you're in your 60s, 70s, and you're not well, or at any age, work the process. You can get well too. Who says that you can't get well at 60? Who says you can't get well at 90? Nobody says that. Of course you can. You absolutely can. So let's get started. First question today is from Alana. Alana's asking, I had the parasite blastocystis and have done your protocol two times with success and want to move on the CBO protocol. Anyhow, I'm in Bali and have a friend use this product to kill parasites named ozonides and has active oxygen and apparently kills candida yeast effectively too. The herbal ingredients are wormwood, mugwort, clove, walnut, majorum, olive, ricinus. I'm asking this question while I'm waiting for the CBO protocol. Could this product been successful in that too? Okay. So... I don't know that product. I don't use the product. And honestly, I'm probably never going to. And the reason is that there's almost never one product that does it all. If you look at our CBO protocol, it has been methodically created. I mean, I can tell you over the last 20 years, because that's how long, you know, like, so I dealt with candida based issues for some time, fixed it, a lot of education around that, a lot of testing around that. And then I got into functional medicine a decade ago and you know, worked with a lot of people in that capacity, fine-tuned this. And about four years, five years ago, we settled in on a protocol that has really worked exceptionally well. So I can tell you this, 
that when I run an organic acids test or just like you found on a parasite protocol that you did, it works great. I mean, like that's the bottom line is like, and if there's anything we need to tweak, we know how to tweak it. But here's the thing. That sounds like maybe it's a great herbal-based protocol. The CBO protocol, a lot of people are trying to copy it. It's not an herbal-based protocol. We are actually removing first. We're using biofilm disruptors, which this does not contain. We're using the herbals, which ours do contain. And we're using things to make sure that yeast and bacteria does not overgrow. The first month contains no probiotics, but it contains something beneficial yeast that will crowd out the negative forms of yeast. And then we add in the probiotics and the transient beneficial yeast at that point has already moved on. And then we just begin to repopulate. I mean, it's really scientific and systematized. I don't see why you would use anything else, honestly, because we sell it at such a low price because we just know how well it works and we know how it can change people's lives. Because if you're constantly dealing with gut issues, I mean, you're you're talking about issues that can affect mood, anxiety, hormones, stress, weight gain, skin, migraines. I mean, you name it, right? 90% of all autoimmune issues related to the gut. So I would run the organic acids test and the stool test. Ideally, if you can run the food sensitivity test, then great too. Then if you find something, I would do the parasite protocol, H. pylori protocol, CBO protocol for everything to take care of it, and it will work. All right. Sinjin's up next. Good morning, Dr. Ball. I'm looking further into my education upon completing IHP level two. I've read a lot of books lined up to talk about the seven branches of IHP, which is the Integrative Health Practitioner Institute, but seeking hands-on experience with working someone through internship or finding a mentor that I can work with individually. What should I do about once I become board certified? I would love to be able to say I'm mostly interested in just one healing method covered, but I truly enjoy them all from personally putting into practice what natural hygienists have taught, learning about functional medicine labs. I haven't dove much into hypnosis other than listening to cybernetics while I sleep to see what happens. Would love to visit outside the US or Hawaii to intern, but I don't know where to start. If you don't mind, could you give some recommendations to myself and others out there seeking more experience as well as cultural submersion that will give us more skills to serve others? Thank you. Last time I wrote in was episode 500. Congrats on breaking 1,000. Lots of inspiration and guidance from you and the team along the way. Gracias. Thank you, Sinjin. Much appreciated. So my recommendations on internships or mentorship is this. What are you most passionate about that you're not doing just to do, but you're so passionate about it that you would either pay for the internship or work for free? Because most places are going to charge you to be an intern if they're good, or they'll have you work basically in exchange to be mentored by someone in the practice. The hard part is this. We're like applying to one doctor who's already very busy is typically not going to happen for a few reasons. One is that they simply might not be able to allow you to sit in with patients because of confidentiality, et cetera. Many people have applied. I I just, I'm not going to let people sit in on my consultations. The reason is I just respect the person in front of me and I want them to be able to talk confidentially with me and not, and feel free to say whatever they'd like, right? Don't hold back. But in terms of like mentoring on how to get it done, you know, I used to teach. I used to teach Ayurvedic Abhyanga massage. I used to teach Ayurvedic Panchakama when I was opened up a wellness center. So I've taught all of those and mentored, and I've also been mentored, of course, myself. So my highest recommendation is this. What do you want to learn? And then seek out the certifications first that do that, whether it be like you, you talked a couple times about hypnosis or maybe NLP or cyber cybernetics or something like that. And then whoever's teaching that or wrote a book on it, maybe you're able to intern with them. That's basically what I did, right? Like that's how I found my mentors. I reached out. Most said no. Some said yes. The ones that said no, I didn't feel like they were a bad person. It's just like, hey, like I understand how busy I am. I didn't even have that perspective right then. I mean, I'm going to work literally right up to when I'm going to the gym. And then when I'm at the gym, if I'm walking there, I'm probably going to be checking Slack for my team. I'm going to be answering emails. And then when I get there, I'm going to do my workout. I'm going to try to like have that time for myself. And then when I leave the gym before I get home, I'm going to be checking Slack messages again with my team. I'm going to be reading labs, responding. Then I'm going to go home and then it's my family's time. And then I'm going to wake up and then I'm going to do it again. Right? Like, so it's like, but this is what I love to do. I can't and would not 
do anything else in my life. This is what I want to do. So that's just my way of saying that some people you're going to be able to mentor with. Some people, they might just be like me and just be like, you know, I'd love to. I really would love to. It's just not a human possibility because I can't stop for a second, you know, like during the day, except when it's my schedule time. And then my schedule time is like, okay, you have downtime at lunch and I have downtime to put on my binaural beats and I have downtime to meditate if I want to. And I, you know, and then I go to the gym and that's my time. And so anyway, there's always time you build into your day, but what would I do? Well, I mean, if you want to study Ayurveda, you don't have to go to India or Sri Lanka to do that, but you certainly can. And we mentioned the places for internships inside of IHP. So you're welcome to check out those. One is in Mysore. I think they'll do internships. I don't know if they will. I studied directly under a doctor there from the US, but he opened a place in Mysore. Rishi Kesh, that was again a private mentorship, which was technically Duradun in the foothill of the Himalayas. In Kerala, I did intern, but that was really rough living. That was in Trivandrum. I interned in Barawala in Sri Lanka, and that was beautiful. That was really nice. I was part of a huge clinic there. So there's a lot of possibilities. And um, again, that was a really poor answer. But honestly, telling somebody where to intern is the worst answer I could give you because that's what's right for me. I can't tell you what's right for you. Follow your heart, honestly, of what it's telling you to do next. Daryl's up next. Hey, Dr. Rawl, good show. Would you say if chlorophyll is a superfood supplement or is it overrated? Is it similar to chlorella? Do you recommend it in your practice? If so, can you say what are the benefits or who should use it? Keep up the good work. Yeah, Daryl, I'm happy to answer this question. L- well, let me answer it this way. I'm going to like really go down to like brass tacks, right? Like the basics and what really matters. Chlorella contains chlorophyll, but chlorophyll does not necessarily have to contain chlorella. So chlorophyll, look at it as like the oxygenated, almost like the pigment you get in green plants or green algae. And it is great in terms of helping to build up the blood. And by that, we we mean oxygen and red blood cells, etc. Chlorella has a different... So it does that, but more. Crack cell chlorella, make sure, make sure this is important, that it is not full of toxins as well. Like, really important that you have yours third-party tested. Our chlorella is super expensive. It's part of our heavy metal detox. It's not an equilibrium nutrition brand because ours isn't the best source in the world. So we use the best sources in the world. I'm always open and honest about that. Chlorella is amazing. It is a natural chelator of heavy metals. It does work and it's clinically proven to work. Should you use it on a daily basis? Well, in small dosages. So I use all these superfoods, quote unquote, in the daily fruit and vegetable blend. So it's not high dosages because I'm not a high dosage nutritional supplement kind of person. I don't think that you should do that in the long run. I believe in moderate balanced doses for the long run and higher doses in the short term in order to rebalance the body. Once it's balanced, then we're back down to moderate baseline foundational based protocols. So you know, is it overrated? Well, it's kind of like, is it overrated for what? I wouldn't use, I mean, like, so for example, I wouldn't use coenzyme Q10 to help particularly with migraines, but I would use it in terms of mitochondrial energy for people over the age of like 60. Again, like vitamin B12 is absolutely fantastic, but am I going to use that for somebody who has leaky gut intestinal permeability in order to seal up the gut wall? No, I mean, I can use it, but not for that purpose. I would use glutamine and I would use zinc carnosine and I would use aloe vera and I would use DGL and other products like that, like marshmallow root. And so those are all great. So again, it's always like, what are you asking it for? If you're asking for a blood builder or a heavy metal detoxifier, then you've got it. Like that's a great one to use. All right. Good question, Daryl. Karen's up next. Good afternoon, Dr. Ball. My husband is a Recent fan of your methods for good living. I'm currently listening to your podcast regarding Alzheimer issues. My father, unfortunately, is in the throes of the disease and has recently read your book. He's already very thin and having trouble putting all the pieces together to implement your strategies. For example, he's basically stopped eating a regular diet that he thinks that will help him empty his rain barrel more quickly. That being said, I'm trying to figure out what to recommend to my mother, his caregiver, as to what steps she may take in helping him reach his wellness goals in stopping or reversing the effects of Alzheimer's. My mother is a tough sale on anything outside of conventional medicine practices or their family doctor. My dad's on heart medication, been taking for some time. He's got irregularities in digestive tract and processes. He's a Vietnam vet. He's been exposed to a lot of chemicals and toxins, trying to figure out the best way to help my parents 
who have been dealing with conventional medicine with very little results. There was also a lot of confusion for my dad and the best way to implement your protocol. I know that you're very busy and you're doing what you can to help others with their health. Any recommendations would be appreciated. Thank you very, very much for your work and time and I look forward to hearing from you soon. God bless, be well, and take care. Thank you, Karen. Same to you. So let me give this an honest answer. I would check out those three podcasts I did that were parts one, two, and three on Alzheimer's disease. I go through all of the labs to run. I also go through running the organic acids test to see if there's any gut issues. I go through running the hair tissue mineral analysis to see if there's mineral imbalances or heavy metals. I go through the omega-3 test to look to see if there's omega-3 balance because I do believe that healthy fats are very important for Alzheimer's as well. I want to make sure that there's good omega-3s. So, I mean, again, I can't work with someone with Alzheimer's by answering a question on a weekend podcast. And I know that you're not asking me to. So I just, I want to appreciate that as well. But I need to get you started because I need to, right? I need to be able to somehow get you some information. So I can't recommend enough the Daily Foundational Protocol Level 3. It's going to be the Daily Nutritional Support. It's going to be the Daily Fruit and Vegetable Blend. It's going to be the Omega-3s. It's going to be the Daily Probiotic. And it's going to be the daily digestive enzyme, one at each meal. So it's the best place to get started. I don't know his particular condition. I don't know what he has going on. So I can't make specifics besides that. I would definitely recommend adding in some vitamin D. Most adults could use 4,000 IUs per day. Probably going to be the right amount for your dad, but I have no idea until he runs the thyroid adrenal hormone and checks his vitamin D. I definitely recommend a detox, of course. I recommend a heavy metal detox. Absolutely. I recommend our equilibrium nutrition detox. But again, I can't say that's what to do because I don't know if it's contraindicated by the medications that your dad is on. So the more you can do to empty your rain barrel, a more of a plant-based diet, I don't want him to lose too much weight. So we do want to make sure we get enough protein and enough good fat. Healthy starches will be great as well, right? The blue zones, what do they use? Well, Japanese yams, purple potatoes, like squashes. Those are great veggies to get the weight back up. IHP level one will teach all of these things too. So even if you didn't want to do the certification, integrative health practitioner level one, the course is definitely a way to go. The next time we open, we are currently closed. You're allowed in, but the next opening isn't until September. So, you know, that's absolutely where it would start. But again, I'll tell you this, I will tell you this for sure, that for those who have Alzheimer's, I've seen it be reversed, sometimes not completely, but I have seen it reversed and I've definitely seen it being stopped in its tracks. So being able to maintain where you're currently at, which is great as well. All right. So hopefully that was help. Thank you for writing in. Hopefully that was helpful. Todd's writing in next. Dr. Brawl, hope this message finds you well. Quick question. If in your weightlifting book for men, you sometimes list the reps backwards, eight to five, for four sets. I couldn't find the explanation anywhere in the book, so I thought I'd reach out. Is this a pyramid stacking where I should add weight each set and do fewer reps as the weights get heavier? Thanks for your feedback. All the best, Todd. Todd, great question. I love when people bring up weightlifting exercise as well because it was my first true passion. Still is to this day, still do it. Okay, so let's talk about this. The book is called A Man's Guide to Muscle and Strength. It's on Amazon. It's on equilibriumnutrition.com. It's not just for men. It's through Human Kinetics. They are the biggest publisher of essentially textbooks for the fitness industry. And I was uh, very happy because it's it's you know, it's prestigious. It really is. And I'm not going to say that it's not. I felt great being asked by the largest textbook publisher for fitness to ask me to write a book. What I didn't love was that it had to be the title, A Man's Guide to Muscle and Strength. I understand that everything has to ha- be able to sell books, right? So there has to be a little bit of marketing behind it. So it's fine. But keep in mind, it's for women as well. So I don't want women to feel like they can't do the book. It's for everybody, right? Because everybody has a human body. And so it gives you a year's worth of programs. Okay. I don't own the book. I wrote all the content, every word of it. But when I write eight to five, it's a great question. When you see the reps descend, it means that you're probably going to do the first two sets at eight reps. Let's just say you're doing squats and you're doing uh, 135 pounds. Well, your first set would be eight reps at 135. Your next set might be 155, 155 pounds at eight reps. Then we're really going to get to the harder working sets. And that might be 185 at two sets of five, right? So, or it could be ascending every set. 
but that's what you're looking at. So it doesn't mean that you also can't do seven reps or six reps. That's why there's a hyphen, eight dash five. You are just pushing yourself to your limit while keeping good form for the last two to potentially even three sets. And whatever you get between eight and five is great. But push yourself that last set or two that the reps might only be five reps. That's what it means. But you already figured that out. So good for you. Nice work. All right. Let's see. I can get in one more question today. It's from Leah. Hi, Dr. Ball. I was wondering if you can help me with a client. I would love to hear your feedback and input. She's been dealing with Crohn's for 19 years, been through all sorts of medications and diets, lately tried the specific carb diet. She's having ongoing flare-ups and recently had surgery. They removed the scar tissue in Crohn's and said, it's like a restart. She came to me as the last hope, and I really want a fresh start for her. Unfortunately, she doesn't have the money to spend on any tests. It wants to see her options until then. What foods to avoid? Obviously, without any evidence on lab paper, it's stressful for me to give her the right answers. Appreciate your help. Yeah, I mean, I totally see where you're coming from, Leah. And we do the same thing. You know, in private practice, sometimes people can only spend money on one thing. Good nutritional supplements, uh, of course, and good food, which comes first, and not on labs, right? I get it. I mean, I was there. Not 17, that's when I got sick, but 19 years old, walk into my doctor's office. Oh, this is an alternative doctor, and I put that in air quotes. They were a acupuncturist, and they were a medical doctor, got their training, I believe, in Russia, and then came over here, passed licensing, and anyway, so they had a different perspective. Great doctor, super thankful to him to this day as well. I've had a great, lot of great doctors, right? They didn't all have the answers in the beginning, but they walked me along the path. So this doctor said, here are the labs I'd like you to run. Well, again, I'm, I'm only in college. I have no money. And, you know, it was a lot of money for my family. And so we ran two of the labs, starting with the adrenal hormone, and we ran a food sensitivity test. Later, we would run a hair tissue mineral analysis, like a stool test after that. So what we did is we saved money. We ran labs. We got information. We did some supplements. And we continued on. I spent, this is no exaggeration, I spent almost all of my money, that my personal money I used from working, on nutritional supplements all through college. Uh, every, almost every dollar. I would go with my friends, but I would never eat out at restaurants. I would never do any of that. I had no money. When I tell you that, like that whatever I made during the summer and winter break is the money that I had. And then when I was, um, I think a sophomore, I started working as a personal trainer and I would make a little bit of money just after school. But mainly I, I was, I mean, I was at college to, to study. Right. And so I didn't get out of class most days until four. And then I'd have to you know, I would go to the gym because I was working on my health as well. And I would go eat, then I would study, and then I would go to bed. And then on the weekends, of course, I had a good time with my friends, don't get me wrong. Uh, but that was that. So I totally know where you're coming from. In this client's case, I would do the CBO protocol. I would do a rotation diet, check out my podcast on a rotation diet. And I would really rebuild the gut. CBO protocol, again, I don't know, so I can't give you the exact recommendations, but I would do probably do CBO, which is citricidal, and then I would do the um, CBO finisher, which is the heal and seal afterwards. I would do a rotation diet. Uh, no, f- every food is suspect. I would gradually move the foods back in. I would do all cooked foods in the beginning. I would do a lot of smoothies to rebuild that digestive system. That's what I would do. But again, I can't give you exactly what to do over a podcast. But if you're in my office, you told me those symptoms, that's what I would do. And then I would also work on stress because most people with Crohn's or colitis have stress as one of those underlying factors. So great question. Thank you so much for also wanting to help these people. You are living that lifestyle. I love it. So thank you so much to all of you who have written in, who have asked your questions, who have also left reviews on iTunes. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. And if this podcast was helpful, please do feel free to pass along to anyone else you believe it could serve. And don't forget to tune in tomorrow on our Mindset and Motivation Monday show. Are you ready to heal yourself and then go on to heal others? If so, the Integrative Health Practitioner Institute can help you discover proven functional medicine protocols that blend the best of seven different healing disciplines from around the world. I personally share with you the exact handouts in protocols I use in my private practice that enable people to get well, lose the weight, and live longer, stronger. I want to pass this information on to the next generation of health coaches, and that is exactly why I created IHP. We are the future of the health coaching industry, and the skills and knowledge you will learn will make you an in-demand certified health coach anywhere in the world. Although we have many medical professionals taking the IHP certifications, no experience is necessary, and half our members have no previous health certifications. 
At the Integrative Health Practitioner Institute, our motto is a health coach in every home. Our goal is that you take this knowledge and then share it with family, friends, loved ones, your community, or in a practice where you create a career you love and can be proud of. The global IHP community is filled with some of the most kind and caring people in the world, and we can't wait to welcome you into our world soon. For more information or to set up a discovery call with one of our IHP Health Coach graduates, simply head over to integrativehealthpractitioner.org.